What's up guys? Here's a little intermission for you. So, break from the climbing videos. So I wanted to talk about this uh, for a while. I made videos about it in the past, but every once in a while I think it's good to make a little refresher. So I'm going to talk about tips and tricks to either start your business and get it off the ground or continue maintaining your business. And, I don't know, hopefully I'm going to talk about things that not too many people have talked about and I wanted to talk about some of the things that people don't tell you that's kind of uh, I'm not going to say it goes without saying for a seasoned entrepreneur but again uh, I found I found personally I'm five years in right now but certain things surprisingly went straight forward and other things were were an incredible mind fuck. So, you know, I make th I make these videos. Uh, well, I make them for a lot of reasons, but you know, I would like to help those in a position like me, because in doing so, I think I am helping me. So, without further to do, so I guess one of the reasons. I'm making this video is because the other day um, a channel I subscribed to did a live stream about starting a business with no money. Now if you haven't seen any of Keith Kalfas's videos, um, if you're thinking about starting a business, I really recommend watching them. Um, I didn't want to really do a channel review and that's not what I'm going to do, but briefly about Keith's channel. Um, despite the fact that there's a lot of stuff on it that I disagree with, there is an incredible amount of useful information, and especially the part, or the parts, plural, about digging deep and starting from nothing. This guy definitely has it, and he has a hustler's mentality. So, you know, what does this have to do with skipping rope? Well, it has a lot to do with skipping rope. If you think this is boring and you want to skip to the end of the video, like spoiler alert, it's it's just more of this. So if you think this is boring, yeah, you're right, but it's not for you. So get the fuck off and go enjoy your job as a mailman or, you know, working for the government or working for a giant company. Because if you can't even watch a half hour video, then you definitely do not have what it takes to sustain. So I guess that brings me to my first kind of essential skill. And this is something, again, people are going to say, what? But to others, it might be self-explanatory. So this is the ability to sustain, the ability to have stamina. And what better way to build this ability than to build cardiovascular health? I mean, think about it so much of the time people end up doing a bad job because they're tired or lazy or out of breath or you know whatever let's say let, let's say and this is best case scenario but if people is if people are able to work their body to 100 percent like when they choose to focus on the task at hand and to devote all their mental energy to said task again it's only a matter of time before the body fucking wears out so, and this is assuming people are at their best. So, why wouldn't you want to make it so that your body wears out as slow as possible? You know, if, if even. Okay, naturally everyone's body wears out, but hopefully you take my point. So, this is essential. So, I would, I would even say, before even the stamina, like, you need to build the discipline. You need to build the discipline to tell yourself that you're going to try to go for X amount of time, and then you need to build the stamina to go for X amount of time. Um, so that's the first thing. That's the first thing you need. It's not giant muscles. It's fucking stamina. Stamina, 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 stamina. And you don't even have to go fucking full speed all day. You just have to be able to work at a normal pace, but constantly. Because that's the stuff that gets you tired and it makes you want to quit and if you're not tired you can actually think objectively 
Um, Alright. As far as thinking objectively goes, you heard of post nut clarity? <laughs> well, it, it, it's kind of like that. It's kind of like that, but you want to keep some of that pre nut confusion because you also want to be hungry all the time and you don't want to be complacent. So, whatever it takes, like whatever it takes to stay motivated or to get yourself motivated, whatever you have to tell yourself, whatever fucking movies or books you have to watch or read beforehand to hype yourself up, whatever anime, whatever music, whatever the fuck it is, no matter how ridiculous it is or how ridiculous you think other people might think it is, it really doesn't matter. None of that shit matters. What matters is if it works or not. So that's it. So you need to hype yourself up to do whatever it takes to get yourself motivated. If it doesn't take much to get yourself motivated and you're always motivated, then that's great. Second thing, you need to find a place to put that fucking energy. So, hence into your business or into yourself. So I think, again, I think skipping rope, for instance, or running is a great way to not only build discipline and stamina. And look, if you have a physical job, then all the more reason to build these two things. And if you don't have a physical job, then all the more reason to build these two things. Because you're not getting them at work. So you might as well fucking get them. Also, if you want to like, you know, if you want to build muscles and do whatever, any other kind of exercise, again, like, start with making sure that your body can sustain. Now, people are going to take this example to extremes in the comments and say like, yeah, well, you know, an ultra marathon runner can't become a fucking power lifter or can't become a sumo wrestler. It's like, yeah, no shit. Okay, first of all, <laughs> fuck sumo. <laughs> it's not a fucking sport. And second of all, yeah, pick your fucking alley and then go down set alley. So that's that, that that's the first thing. And that's good because we're a third of the way through the video. So yeah, stamina and discipline. And a lot of things that I see, you know, when people complain and they complain about things not working for them, it's you know, 99% of the time it's just because of that. It's either because they didn't try hard enough or they didn't try for long enough. How many times has this happened to you or how many people do you know that fit this bill when they decide to turn over a new leaf, whatever that new leaf may be, whether it's to stop smoking or start a new diet or start exercising or, you know, let's say even uh, do a better job or find a better job or whatever. How many of these people you know, including yourself, if you've done it, how many people make an effort for a day only never to be heard from or seen from again? And I don't mean it's because, like, they made an effort to for a day and then it flew them away to their fucking fantasy place. I mean, they made an effort for a day and that's it, the end. And usually it's one of two outcomes. Um, either they go way too hard for them and by and you know I'll get into this after either they go way too hard and get hurt and then that prevents them from ever trying again or they make a moderate effort so let's say for instance in this video I'm skipping rope for just under 30 minutes so someone is going to set that as their goal and they'll make a moderate effort and they'll go out one day and skip rope for you know one minute and it's going to be really hard as it is and then they're going to say, okay, so if I want to do it for 30 minutes, I just have to do that 30 times. And I could do it if I want. And that's not necessarily true at all. Like, yes, 30 minutes is 30 times one minute. But it's not just a question of repeating it 30 times. I mean, like I said, it is. But a lot of things start to break down very fucking quickly. That you're not going to experience just in one minute of sustained effort. And that's why it's good to push yourself. That's why it's good to test yourself. That's why it's good to know yourself and to know your limitations instead of just imagining them. Art of war, guys. He who knows himself and who knows his enemy will win every time. So, I mean, to me, it's pretty self-explanatory. But that's another thing you guys could read. Um, it's a very short read. Even go to YouTube, listen to the audiobook, <laughs> listen to it when you skip rope or run. It's approximately one hour long, and if you have any sort of common sense, a lot of it you'll probably know already, and it'll make sense to you. 
if not it's going to seem completely foreign which is good too um, a lot of it if, if that's the case too i would say you need to hear it and you need to snap out of whatever mindset you're in now because the mindset that you're in now you know if you're watching this video and you want to change and you know you want to make a better life for yourself i mean that's a great start but the mindset that you've kept up to this point is wrong because it hasn't gotten you what you want so that's another thing okay and you know people people ask me these things all the time that's why i talk about it and i the real reason the real 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 deep down fucking reason that made me want to make this video right now you know as opposed to just having the idea floating around in the air or making it even several years ago was that someone in the comments um of keith's live stream you know and it was all about being a self-starter and keith he knows how to fucking hit the block uh, i'm gonna get into that in a bit but there you know and it was all about that it was all about making something from nothing and about basically how if you work for a big company or almost any other company they're pretty much just going to take advantage of you until you die and that's it and let me tell you something guys okay if you're a good worker if you're good at what you do anything you do or if you have the potential to be good at anything you do sure a good boss might recognize your potential and reward you accordingly and you know teach you the ropes and help you advance through the ranks of the company that's what a good boss should do the reality the majority of bosses are not like this the majority of other employees are not like this and if you're above average or better chances are the people you work for the people you work with are just going to exploit you this is just how it is don't believe me go try it and this is also another excuse that people make about justifying why they don't work harder than the next guy and this infuriates me i get it look I, b before i started my business i worked at all sorts of places with all sorts of fucking retards and it drove me fucking crazy we would work in a chain essentially and almost everybody else was a weak link except for me and uh, i'm not bragging i know it sounds like i am but these were like relatively simple jobs but people are so stupid and people are so predictable and people are so lazy and they're so greedy and people care so much about instant gratification and nothing more and if you want to succeed on your own you have to put these fucking ideas out of your head because they're all pure fucking garbage and they will lead to your degeneracy faster than they will lead to anything else and they'll give you a sense of entitlement that you haven't earned and this leads also to the mindset of people thinking that they deserve money just for showing up and doing nothing which is fucking ridiculous <laughs> look man if anyone worked for me and thought they could get paid just by showing up like i'd show them the door very fucking quickly and it would be fun for me to make an example out of them in front of fucking whoever is fucking watching because i get off on that sort of shit yeah so don't fuck up do your best give it your all but you know people don't want to do these things people want to skip to the very end so in the comments um you know what what frustrated me was you know someone who didn't know anything he said oh the best way to get experience is to work for someone else <laughs> and this is an incredibly naive thing to believe yes you know it, it's okay to have a mentor but i'm telling you guys i spent 35 years okay not quite 35 but not even since i joined the workforce but even before i joined the workforce when i was in school i, I spent my entire life believing the teachers were good or the teachers could be good i just didn't have the right ones and the employers could be good i just didn't have the right ones and i tried to make the best out of every situation i was ever in and i should have risen to the top you know i, I had a rise everywhere i was definitely in the top five percent but 
it was impossible to rise. Um, you know, a, a good example of this, mind you, for an unrelated reason. So it happens in the workplace for one reason, but this actually happened to me in school. Okay, in school I got really good grades, but it doesn't matter because grades are honestly fucking meaningless. So in high school especially, I was in all of the advanced classes and for mo which is nothing out of the ordinary. It's it's fucking stupid. We're a group of fucking loser fucking nerds. So I was in all the advanced classes and many of the classes that I was doing were not only advanced for the grade I was in, but it was the advanced version from the next grade. And, you know, in seventh grade, you know, the first year of high school or middle school, whatever you guys want to call it, depending on where you are, uh, I got especially high grades. Uh, I got the highest average in the grade, you know, several times over. And I was wondering, and the only reason, well, the only reason, I mean, teachers would put work in front of me and I would do it. Uh, that's it. You know, I'm, I wasn't gifted. I was just, and I still am, a hard worker. Like, I, I'm a grinder. So, yeah, it's not always pretty. It's not always smooth. And I don't always pass with flying colors, but I get the job done. And over and over and over again, these habits add up. So, in high school, and just in seventh grade, you know, after killing everything for three out of four terms, the fourth term, too, but the third term is when I, I, I put the questions forward, but, you know, I asked my teachers, not if, but I asked them when I would be able to skip a grade. And they laughed at me, and they told me that that's just not done anymore. And, you know, like, we can get into this in another video, but I asked my parents the same thing, who are also teachers, and they laughed it off in the exact same way. They said, oh, Greg, you're just being silly. <laughs> Why'd you want to skip a grade anyway? And I said, well, if I'm doing next year's curriculum and the advanced version, like, what's the point of even having it? What's the point of even having differences in curriculum if it doesn't get me anywhere? And, you know, if, if this is going to last until 11th grade, which is the final grade we have in Quebec, if this is going to last until 11th grade, and by the time I'm done 10th grade, I've done all of the 11th grade advanced classes. I said, doesn't that stand to reason that not only I, but everyone else in my class should skip grade 11 entirely? And again, this just got laughed off. Oh, Greg, you know, you're silly. Why am I silly? I don't want to fucking be there. And, you know, two people basically who should, and this isn't just because of this. <laughs> this is in general another hard lesson for me to learn. But two people that should never be listened to are teachers and parents. Yeah, sorry, but it's true. And, uh, you know, my parents my parents know my thoughts on this. You know, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, but it's true. You know I've told you. You know it's true. But a lot of parents like to think that their kids succeed because of them. But many kids or people succeed despite their parents. And it, it, it's fucked up. But, you know, sometimes you can blame them. Sometimes they can't. You know, because sometimes they know better, but most of the times they don't. And if my parents were entrepreneurs, then it'd be different. But they weren't. You know, they're essentially government employees. So they can't counsel me when I'm trying to venture into uncharted waters, which is pretty much most waters for them. So that brings me, I guess, to my next point. Might be my final point, depending on how much time we have left here in this video. But everyone is going to doubt you and everyone is going to give you bad advice and they're going to tell you to stop and they're going to tell you you're going to die. They're going to tell you to go to, that you're going to go to jail. They're going to tell you you're going to go broke. They're going to tell you you don't know what you're doing and they're going to tell you it's not going to work. And any hiccup you have, even if your business or your plan or whatever, even if it does work, any and every single fucking hiccup you have, if you share it with these people, they'll be too quick to tell you that they told you so, and to tell you to throw in the towel. And this is going to be most people that you know. Um, like I said, your mindset is wrong. So this is something that you have to eliminate from your mindset. These people have never been where you're trying to go. 
They haven't even been where you've started to go. So don't listen to them. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Period. If they knew what they were talking about, they would have done what they're giving you advice on how to do. So you have to look at where that advice comes from. If you're trying to start a business, then you only want to take advice from other entrepreneurs. If you're trying to get fit, then you want to fucking take advice from other fit people. And no, you're not going to take advice from a fat slob who's going to... And they're all going to say the same thing. They're going to say, yeah, but I know what not to do. No, you don't. You, you fucking don't. I'm not fucking taking advice from you and not, not the advice that you think. You know, in my head, when I look at a person like that, like I draw my own conclusions and I don't want to be anything like them. You know, if they're, if they're unsuccessful. They might think they know what's up so often they have no fucking idea otherwise they would remedy it that's another thing too talk is cheap everyone says they could do it you know or they think that again they tried for a day so it's worth a fucking pat on the back it's not it takes a long time you know you know how long it takes to see results from something it's not it's not terrible but it takes that long it takes a while and you can get results in a day but don't settle for that do it another day, and another day, and another day. And you start one minute at a time. And then after a week, you're doing it for two minutes. And before you know it, you're doing it for 20 minutes. And before you know it, you're doing it for an hour. And it's not just skipping rope. It's not just running. It's everything. It's all connected. So, I mean, we started our business. I mean, we had a chainsaw when we started. But basically, the saw that got us the most jobs was a three dollar handsaw from the dollar store and most of the jobs that we did especially in our first year especially early on they were just extremely light pruning jobs and we didn't need anything other than that three dollar handsaw and you know we've gotten several handsaws since then but it's not uncommon to go out with a three dollar fucking handsaw and nothing else and to make over five hundred dollars for a couple of hours work and by a couple, I don't mean like 11 or 12. I mean like two or three hours work. And yeah, like even your first year, you can do this. You don't need the biggest of everything. You don't need the most of everything. As a matter of fact, if you try to skip steps to the end like this, you're just going to fuck yourself over because you're not going to have earned that equipment and you're not going to have earned the demand to necessitate that equipment. And you're not going to be able to sustain the payments on that equipment. And you're not even going to know how to use it. You're not going to have a place to park it. And you're not going to learn fuck all. You're just going to learn how to fucking one of the many ways to tank a business. And you're not even going to know what you've done wrong. Because you're adding too many variables that you can't control. Especially at the onset. So start very small. Start with a minimum amount of tools possible. And you have to know your own limits. And hopefully test them and extend them so anyway leave your thoughts in the comments downstairs that's all i got for now because i'm about to stop skipping and uh, i go into a few more tips and tricks after when i put the rope down but you're gonna have to watch those in another video and i'm just i'm just keeping it going now okay all right that's it okay leave a thought in the comments downstairs okay peace out bye